series. So uh, I think almost everyone understands this concept. Si on bouge le corps, we start to move the body. Uh, on dit que il y a naturellement un point de densité. Right? We create sort of a point of density. For example, this leg is much more solid. Puis on dit, right, and sort of avoid. So if I exaggerate bend and I go like this, right, it's very easy to see that that's load bearing. C'est tout chargé sur cette côté. Puis c'est complètement léger sur l'autre. Right? It's loaded on one and empty in the other. So what we're going to do now is, as we start to pull the guy off structure, sometimes when you come back, des fois quand vous êtes déformé puis tu vas retourner, naturellement. Um, si tu bouges dans une façon statique, if you move in a static way, it's very easy to come under with your weight distributed. Right? C'est complètement distribué. Mais si s'il y a du force, tu es dans bain, puis tu veux faire pendant un mouvement, naturellement tu vas faire une transition ou un transfert. Right? If I do it in motion, there's always one side that's load bearing or one side that's light, and it's a constant transfer from one to the other. So what we're going to do, on veut pencher le corps, we want to feel that body completely closed to a point where, if I resist it with my neck, si tu résistes avec le cou ici. Même si vous êtes le gros, tu vas déchirer quelque chose, right? It's, it's inefficient force, so I want to be in a position where I would be penalized if I use it. Maintenant, je veux juste corriger la reste, right? So, I can lower my body down this much, but now I've lost a lot of my sort of horizontal advantage, right? So, tu l'as changé tout ton niveau. If I just start thinking of moving, right? Now, by releasing that leg, it took very little energy, right? Tu recules ou tu peux avancer, right? I can advance. Mais pendant la transition, il y a un point de pivot. There's a pivot point, right? And so I just want to feel what this is like. Parce qu'après, quand il y a un density ici, when he starts to choke, my weight naturally has to go on one side for me to transfer. And what happens in dans cette type de mouvement, nous sommes trop habitués d'être égal. Right? We're so used to being equal, but we start taking small shuffles. But we don't have that kind of floating balance, right? Mais la réalité, the reality is, comme un pipod, as a biped, a bipedal creature, on cherche toujours cette point de triangulation. But we're always looking for that third point of contact. Puis parce qu'on a un base très restreint, we have a narrow base, we're very tall, la seule façon, uh, tu peux bouger facilement, the, or so the most effective range of motion, c'est les rotations sur le plan horizontal, and horizontal rotations. I can spin this way far easier than I can spin this way or spin this way. Si tu prends un, un pirouette contre un roulade ou d'autres choses, de, des choses acrobatiques, tu vas voir, cette type de mouvement, c'est le plus naturel. And I can always do a pirouette easier than a cartwheel or a breakfall. So it's a classic example. So I just want to see that on that, that narrow base, sur cette base uh, restreint, il y a deux façons tu peux augmenter ton équilibre. Two ways to improve your balance. Tu peux écarter puis baisser. I can lower my, sort of change the ratio from being six feet high, one foot wide, right? I can go three feet wide, four and a half feet high. Tu changes, tu écartes ton base, tu réduis ton hauteur. Mais c'est temporaire, right? C'est pas vraiment permanent. It's not, it gives you the sense of solidity, but as soon as you move, he's adjusting as well. Ou tu peux faire une spirale. If I start to spiral, I actually have a longer moment of balance. Puis pendant cette action, um, équilibre dynamique, c'est plus fort. Like we talk about combat. If I try to stay very balanced in a wrestling match, I'm going to get killed. If I take the guy and I start moving, I have about a second and a half where I have superior balance, superior force. Same thing with hitting. If I'm trying to stay straight, where I start to look at this kind of a motion, I have much more power, much more balance in that spin. Right? So that's in uh, Sistema, we often talk about the spinning top. That's going to be so I just have to get that comfort. So he lets himself be bent now, no resistance, but completely impinged here. You see, even if you lift the eyes, you just lift the eyes, you see stuff starts to happen, yeah? It's not, not very comfortable. So then I start to see, instead of just coming under, for him to come under and straighten, he would have to really go very low, just like that, knee range or choking range or whatever. So I see just how I can step back with one leg, but instead of planting it, I just want to feel that axis of movement, that diagonal line. Entre le caron puis le pied, le pied uh, flottant, right between his crown and his floating leg. And you just play there for a second, see what that balance is like. I can go in any kind of position, even like this, right? And you see what it is to be on one leg for a second. Balance, that's it, and just explore. That's it. Alors, ça va, ça va vraiment augmenter ton, um, ton uh, pas vraiment le corps, it's not really the center, mais c'est comme ton, ton ex, right? It's kind of your axis in the body. Just like the planet, I want to see that I have tremendous strength if I invest in, in sort of putting my weight onto one leg. Puis en plus, l'instant il y a contact, as soon as there's contact, parce que nous sommes euh, les bipodes, we're both bipods, as soon as I grab somebody, on a maintenant un centre de gravité communal. We start to have a center of mass, a communal center of mass. So if I put my leg up, and he takes his leg off the ground, now we're equally dependent on each other, right? Si, si vous êtes sur un genre, if I'm in one leg, he naturally wants to carry my weight. And if he goes to lift his leg after me, the transition is newer for him. That's why in judo you'll see guys very often do this kind of work and they start working because as soon as that other guy lifts his leg, he's going into my territory because I've sort of made it. 
Does that make sense a little bit? It's an advanced sort of physics of grappling. But I just want to get this kind of weight on him. He relaxes. That's it. Find your balance and then see when you're when you're weighted like this. See how you can move that leg from the from the center. If I start to move the hips like this, I start to open. I see that I don't have to change, but you have tremendous power there, much more than you think. Right? And we switch back and forth. Instead of resisting, I just want to see how I can sort of naturally float on that leg and where it wants to go. All the different ways it can adjust. I can do it on either leg. And I find my natural balance. I can put an arm, no, keep put an arm up, I can move it. It's just for my structure. So even if I start to look at movement like this, if I try to move Ben with my arms, just par le bras, c'est pas vraiment efficace. It's not very effective. If I start to put my weight on my on my single leg and I use the counterbalance of my leg to move, now I have much more power. It's my mass moving. Does that make sense? A little bit? Yeah. On a Monday, heavy mass. Back and forth, 15 seconds.